So just what do Ukrainians make of what's happening on the Russian border? Let's get the view now from Kyiv. Peter Zalmayev is the director of the Eurasia Democracy Initiative in the Ukrainian capital. He joins me live on the programme now. Uh, thanks for finding the time, sir, to talk to us today. I appreciate it. Well, uh, the pleasure is mine. Uh, as we saw in that report, two groups have claimed responsibility for the attacks inside Russia. They are the Russian Volunteer Corps and the Freedom of Russia Legion. What do you know of them? Well, uh, we've heard of them uh, uh, throughout the war, uh, probably two, three, three or four months into the war. Uh, we began uh, in earnest to hear about these formations. It's not clear as to what their strength is, how well uh, represented they are throughout the territory of Russia. Uh, but there's at least some credence to uh, some sorts of uh, uh, some a form of internal resistance. If you look at the events of the last uh, essentially year since last summer, where uh, a series of unexplained uh, arsons, uh, derailings, uh, and and uh, other uh, events uh, have happened uh, with no clear explanation. It would just be unreasonable to um, uh, explain all of them as the work of Ukrainian saboteurs uh, or diversionary troops. Russia is a huge country. I cannot imagine Ukrainians being able to penetrate that far into Russia. And most of the time, they have denied that. So I think there's re it's reasonable to assume that there's at least a modicum of eternal resistance, including uh, uh, in what's happening in uh, Belarus. And Ukrainian officials have, you know, uh, trolled uh, Russians in a very kind of, uh, you know, supremely ironic way. They said, well, just like in 2014, the Russians claimed that the, you know, coal miners of the Donbass rose up and dug uh, weapons out of their uh, coal mine shafts. And so the Ukrainians are, are, are now saying that you can just walk into a store, let's say in Belgorod, and buy a tank. And uh, they're, in fact, calling this the, you know, the beginning of a Belgorod People's Republic, you know, a sort of reference to the so-called Luhansk and Donetsk People's Republics. And, you know, you're rejecting there the sort of accusation by Moscow that these are Ukrainian saboteurs. Nonetheless, apparently, at least one of those organisations does have a base inside Russian territory. And I wonder um, what, what you make of them sort of fighting apparently on your behalf as a Ukrainian national, at least one of them has a far right origin, doesn't it? The Russian Volunteer Corps. Are you pleased to see them fighting in some way on your behalf in, amid this conflict? Well, they're fighting uh, not so much on Ukraine's behalf, they're fighting on their own behalf. I mean, they have stated that they're, you know, they are, Putin is the enemy of Russia. They're fighting to reclaim the future, a democratic and uh, a future of their country. And it just so happens that our goals coincide. Obviously, there will be no long-lasting peace and security in Ukraine unless Russia is uh, demilitarized and democratized. And this is what they are, in fact, you know, um, demonstrating. Now, the thing is, what this situation in Belgorod is really showing is that this hybrid aggression that Russia uh, is waging against Ukraine uh, can cut both ways. And now they're seeing that this can go against them as well. Uh, right now, Russians are now, uh, you know, having to fortify their borders. So obviously this will help Ukraine because it will probably pull off some, uh, you know, troops that Vladimir Putin's been, uh, you know, uh, uh, hoping will try to staunch Ukraine's coming uh, counteroffensive. But also, uh, in, in closing, I will say that uh, what's happening in Belgorod really neutralizes any sort of... Uh, uh, you know, victory slogans and any festivities around the capture, the final reported capture of uh, Bakhmut. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, the Russian propaganda, Putin's propaganda, has another major crisis on their hand that they're trying to, and very unsuccessfully trying uh, to explain to the population. They remember they set out claiming that they will capture Kiev in three days. And look, they're having to defend their own territory from some weird incursions. This is a very ironic situation. Peter Zamayev, there are many more questions I'd like to ask you about this, but unfortunately we're out of time. I want to thank you for talking to us today. Thanks very much indeed. Peter Zamayev for us there in Kiev.